Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. On Roku, we're in the sports section. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. The vanity code is one word, Dwyer Boxing News. On iTunes, same thing, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, let's get real for a moment. One of the problems with sports right now, from a sports reporting, excuse me, from a sports reporting perspective, is the fact that these sports leagues, leagues that own their content, are now starting to dominate media outlets, right? As part of their auctioning process, by which they sell the right to broadcast their games these sports leagues are getting editorial control right so what you have is a lot of sports league propaganda out there right when there's a member of the media who doesn't align himself with the league's PR spin let's say a real man like ESPN's Bill Simmons when Bill Simmons comes out with hard hitting journalism. He's paid for his opinion. He gives his opinion. That opinion is critical of Roger Goodell, the NFL commissioner, right? Let's say it's not a, you know, it's not an opinion that the NFL itself wants to promote, right? They want you to believe that Roger Goodell is doing a great job at a time when the official position of Goodell's office is that they didn't get the second Ray Rice tape, right? At a time of spin that strains credibility, when a Bill Simmons comes out and is critical of Roger Goodell, rather than get a medal, he gets a suspension, right? ESPN is terrified of losing the NFL's content and they understand that if they're critical of the league, the league is going to take that into account the next time it auctions off its sports games and content. Right? Also, these media outlets are terrified because now there's NFL Network, now there's Major League Network, now there's NBA Network. These leagues are connecting directly with their fans, with their customers, right as technology allows them to do so right via the internet via cable via subscription based models right so what you have now is really one-sided reporting people getting promoted because they're lap dogs for these sports leagues because they have views that fit the propaganda of the league Right, so we're getting really unbalanced stories. One of my real reasons in making this video is to make sure that young people understand that they have rights. Is to make sure that people working as employees out there understand that they have rights. I'm in the Bay Area. The Bay Area has been blessed of late with a sports renaissance. Right, the San Francisco Giants just won another World Series. Right, young Giant fans don't even recall that the Giants went decades out here without a World Series crown. Right, Madison Bumgarner, Buster Posey, uh, Brian Sabian, Bruce Bochy, those guys just won another crown. Right, this is multiple crown city. The Golden State Warriors, if you're a gambler like me and you follow basketball, have one of the best defenses in the entire NBA, right? Andrew Bogut yesterday, I believe, had something like a handful of block shots, and casual fans don't even know who he is, even though he was the first player picked in the NBA draft a few years ago, right? Great basketball masterminds, guys who have masterminded dynasties, guys who have had success 
with more than one franchise. Guys who know the game both in the executive office as well as on the court. Right? Guys like Hall of Famer Jerry West are quietly in the background helping put together a team that quite frankly is better than advertised. Certainly a different Warrior team than the Warrior teams we had up here in the 80s and 90s when who sometimes getting to the playoffs was a challenge. Right now you have the San Francisco 49ers. Let me say this. I'm just going to say it bluntly. They have one of the best coaches in football at any level. Right? Jim Harbaugh simply is a spectacular coach. I can tell you the Stanford Cardinal was a complete joke. That football team was a joke. I can tell you, I was at a high school reunion in New York City. And someone came over to me and said, You know, the Stanford Cardinal right now is close to beating USC. And I can tell you, at the moment they said it, we looked around the room. I was with another Stanford grad, and we were astonished. Somehow Jim Harbaugh had us in Los Angeles about to take down the Roman Empire and that's what happened in that game that game's one of the biggest upsets in modern sports history understand we were in tatters at Stanford this guy somehow made us a BCS bowl eligible group right I'm telling you Stanford's success is because of Jim Harbaugh right I know Andrew Luck contributed greatly too. understand <laughs> It's Jim Harbaugh coaching Andrew Luck. Right? As you think of David Shaw's accomplishments, understand he got handed the keys to a Maserati by Jim Harbaugh. Harbaugh gets to the San Francisco 49ers. Understand the Niners had had some mind-blowingly bad coaches of late. Mike Singletary, hey, God bless him, great player. He wasn't a coach. Right? Certainly not a head coach. The Niners were in tatters. Now, the last three years, Jim Harbaugh has led the San Francisco 49ers to the NFC Championship game. Right? They got to the Super Bowl. They were this close from winning the Super Bowl. Harbaugh's doing it in a way where it's almost an optical illusion. Colin Kaepernick is not that good. Right? He's not Peyton Manning. He's not Aaron Rodgers. He's not Tom Brady. Hell, in my opinion, he's not even Phillip Rivers. Right? Young, inexperienced, green quarterback. But yet Harbaugh has them playing in conference championship games. Now let's be clear here, right? The employment relationship is bilateral. You're hiring each other. At this level, when you're talking about people who have market value, you're hiring each other, right? So, Right now in the Bay Area, you have a ridiculous situation. It's ridiculous. Understand, as I make this video, the 49ers are again above 500. Understand, they lost their last game. The team they lost to are the defending champion Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> in other words, let's just say over the last two years, in fact, during the entire Russell Wilson era, Right? I think it's the last three years many teams have lost to the Seattle Seahawks. Right? Many teams have lost. 49ers go out and the 49ers lose to the Seattle Seahawks. Right? It's a game where Kaepernick throws interceptions. Understand, a coach can give you a great game plan. But nothing will kill whatever advantage or objective you have faster than turnovers. 
right? Turnovers will equal the playing field even when one team might have more talent than the other, right? Well, in any event, after that game, right, you've had a crazy situation where some member of the owner's family, right, and you can imagine this member has never played football a day in her life. You can imagine, too, that these members of ownership families might have inherited their wealth, might not even know how to go out and get it, might not have any idea how to break down NFL game film, right? This is just some member of the owner's family tweets that the offensive coordinator, Greg Roman, one of the league's better offensive coordinators, right, should go, right? He's no good, right? The owner of the San Francisco 49ers comes out and apologizes to the fans for the effort of the team. I'm not making this stuff up. If you saw it in a movie and you're a hardcore football fan, you would say, that's unbelievable. That wouldn't happen. If you're watching this video from the Bay Area, you've just seen it happen. This is with a head coach who has just taken you to three different NFC conference games. Championship games. Right? Now, it's even worse than that. The media is so busy trying to get breastfed by the NFL that there's open speculation here on whether the team is going to fire Jim Harbaugh. Let me be clear here. Let's understand the concept of market value. Jim Harbaugh has a job in football. He has a job in football. If the San Francisco 49ers are foolish enough to believe that they can go out there and get another coach as good as Jim Harbaugh, right? Let's say they're silly enough to believe that if they, you know, terminate their relationship with Jim Harbaugh, suddenly they're going to be able to hire Bill Belichick. Suddenly they're going to be able to hire Nick Saban. Right? Sean Payton's going to be available. Mike McCarthy's going to be available. John Harbaugh, after watching this obvious mistreatment of his brother, is going to be available. If the Niners really believe that, then the organization is even more foolish than I believe they are, right? And let's just say I'm not a believer right now in 49er ownership, right? The guy who should be owning that team is Eddie DeBartolo, not his sister and her husband, right? So here's the point. Here's how real power works in the real economy. Understand there are a lot of people out there right now people who own NFL teams who privately know to themselves whether or not a Rooney rule exists or whatever they know for themselves that if Jim Harbaugh is ever available on the open market they're gonna sign him to coach their football team in fact it's worse than that just look at the Hollywood model just look at the business world. Look at what, what happened to PIMCO's Bill Gross, right? Who gets axed by PIMCO, and then George Soros steps out of the darkness right after Bill Gross gets axed and gives him half a billion dollars to invest. I'm just here to tell you that Jim Harbaugh has a job in the NFL. If the Niners axe him, He'll be unemployed for all of five minutes. There are going to be many suitors. There are going to be teams with head coaches who will understand 
that they can upgrade their situations by hiring this guy. Even if there isn't a head coaching opening, they're teams with older head coaches. Let's say they're older head coaches who you don't want to fire because the guy has done so much for the team. I'm telling you, some of these owners will hire Jim Harbaugh to be a team advisor just to get him in the building, just to get him under contract. Right? Understand. Let me go one step further. There's another group you need to think about. We'll call them the friends of Jim Harbaugh. I mentioned John Harbaugh earlier. Right? They're coaches looking at how the 49ers are mistreating Jim Harbaugh. Just the lack of gratitude. The fact that the owner would release a statement apologizing for the team's effort. I'm telling you, there are a list of elite coaches right now who are looking at that ownership group and who are privately telling themselves, I'd never play for that ownership group. Right? They know Jim Harbaugh is an excellent head coach. So they're watching the team debase themselves by mistreating and not appreciating a great head coach. True story, years ago, Kevin Garnett was a superstar player in the NBA. He was from Chicago. Jerry Reinsdorf and the Chicago Bulls wanted to sign him. Right? Kevin Garnett wouldn't even speak to the Bulls. Wouldn't even speak to them. He actually issued a statement where he said, you know, in my dreams, I hope to be as good as Michael Jordan. I saw the way this team treated Michael Jordan. I'm not interested in playing for the Chicago Bulls. Right? My point to you is, even if the 49ers called, let's say, a Nick Saban, I'm just here to tell you that there are coaches who have a private list of teams they would never coach for. It's no knock against the city. Bay Area is a great place. Right? It's no knock against the team history. Wow, the 49ers have risen to some lofty heights. Some of the biggest names in the coaching profession ever. Bill Walsh. Right? You know, we're 49er head coaches. No, it's the ownership group. When you look at a group of owners and you realize these people aren't intelligent enough to recognize and appreciate and be grateful for the talent they have, you know, then you know you don't you yourself don't want to work with these people. Right? Understand too, there's another person who has a say on whether Jim Harbaugh's relationship with the 49ers goes forward. And that's Jim Harbaugh himself. Folks, his contract isn't an ad infinitum contract. Right? It has an end date. Jim Harbaugh, I'm sure, is looking around and he realizes that he's not working for a savvy ownership group. Right? This isn't, you know, like working for George Hallis. No, football people aren't running the organization. He has some GM who he doesn't get along with, right? Some GM who has never played professional football, who is one of these guys who, you know, if he were a baseball guy, he'd be in a sabermetrics, right? He knows fantasy football type numbers and stuff like that, right? That's very different than working for, let's say, football men like Jerry Richardson, the owner of the Carolina Panthers, or Jerry Jones, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys who at least these guys you get the feeling can look at a game and know from their own experience what's working and what's not they can walk through a locker room and know from their own experience what's really going on in a locker room right that's not the situation with the San Francisco 49ers so Jim Harbaugh has issued a statement now keep in mind this is after a member of the owners family has come forward and has criticized his offensive coordinator who if he gets axed by the Niners like Jim Harbaugh would be unemployed for all of five minutes 
right? Jim has said that he has unwavering support for all of his coaches. Read between the lines. That means at the end of the season, when some management hacks come to him, some stooges come to him and tell him that he needs to fire members of his staff, Jim Harbaugh might draw the line. He might be able to point to language in his contract that gives him the right to pick his assistant coaches. He might flatly refuse. He might get himself fired. Why? Because he knows he can then move on to a brighter and better opportunity with brighter and better people. Right? So understand, this isn't all about what Jim has to do to keep his job. The job might have already discredited itself. Right? Jim has market value. I'm telling you that if anything happens to him in San Francisco. Several teams are going to line up to get him. Let me go one step further. You see Colin Kaepernick. He's in Beats commercials. Right? He's tatted up. He wears his hat hip-hop style. I personally like his style. Right? A lot of players in this league are into that kind of music, right? Flow that way. Have that style. You'll notice a lot of players in the league have tattoos. There are a lot of people who own NFL teams who no doubt are looking at how Jim Harbaugh has bonded with Colin Kaepernick. How Jim Harbaugh is handling really a crazy player personnel situation where arguably his two best defensive players right Patrick Willis and Alden Smith have missed several games this year Alden Smith is now back due to injury in Willis's case and off the field problems in Smith's case and they're noticing how Harbaugh has still been able to field one of the very best defenses in the National Football League. Right? Harbaugh's people skills are a positive, not a negative. Right? Many of these owners of teams right, understand that they need a bridge between them and the athletes because their social circles might not have a lot of Colin Kaepernick's in them. Right? Jim Harbaugh somehow connects with players. Right? I know, you know, there were even reports at the beginning of the year that he had lost the locker room. I came on here and I made a video saying, look, it's over in San Francisco. Right? When guys in the locker room are disloyal, right? When they haven't figured out that loyalty is part of fielding a championship football team, when they're disloyal to the coach to the point where after training camp, unidentified sources in the locker room are leaking stories to the press that, you know, uh, Jim Harbaugh's too much of a rah-rah guy, right? Then the ship be sinking, in the words of uh, an athlete back in the day. Well, understand, even given all of that, Jim Harbaugh has this team above 500. Maybe it's not about the San Francisco 49ers possibly firing Jim Harbaugh. Maybe it's more about Jim Harbaugh firing the 49ers, refusing to cave in to idiotic demands of a management group that's never played football, right? And that can't relate to, you know, Colin Kaepernick and players in the locker room, right? Maybe it's about us looking at Jim Harbaugh as being a very talented coach with more success than 95% of the profession and how he's being mistreated 
by an ungrateful franchise. Right? Jim has a job in the NFL. If the 49ers fired him today, I'm guessing he would quickly get a commitment from another team to be a part of that team in some high capacity. Head coach, uh, GM, etc. Right? Unfortunately, because the media is so dominated by the NFL, because CBS, NBC, ESPN, Fox, all want to televise NFL games, and because the league has enough sway to even get an ESPN highly rated series, a popular series, Playmakers, squashed years ago, because the characters were critical of the NFL. Look it up. Right? Because the league is vindictive. Has a memory. Right? Well, literally pull content or ask that content be pulled. That's critical of the league. Right? You're not hearing the other side of the story. The idea that maybe the Niner job isn't a good job. Maybe it's outrageous to undercut a coach the way the owner of the franchise just did after this Thanksgiving game. Maybe it's outrageous to undercut the authority of the offensive coordinator like a member of the owner's family did. Keep in mind, if you're a player in the locker room, what are you to think? Right? The owner's here, you know, saying, hey, I apologize for the lack of effort. Members of the owner's family are saying, hey, this offensive coordinator has to go. If I'm an offensive player in the 49er locker room, what am I to think? Right? You should look at that dysfunction. The question isn't, how can Jim Harbaugh keep his job? The question is, how could this team be this bad, be this poorly run? Does the ownership group even know what they're doing? I don't work for ESPN. ESPN can't suspend me for these comments. Just understand that they've suspended others. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.